Hi, this is Norm Haley, Regional Extension Agent for the Alabama Cooperative Extension System. This Fresh from the Field video is going to go over some of the tips and techniques and some of the equipment that's needed to trap not just nuisance beavers, but for those uh, beavers that are caught during the fur bearing trapping season here in Alabama. Uh, the video is going to go over recognizing some beaver sign, um, some of the actual equipment and, and why that equipment's needed to effectively trap beavers, and also some of the actual trap sets in the field over all those different types of beaver signs and some of those areas that those beavers are inhabiting. I hope you enjoyed today's video. All right, so here we'll go over some of the basics or what I think are necessities for beaver trapping, particularly here in the state of Alabama. Uh, legally, you are required to carry a choke stick. This is to where you can release non-target animals safely or also just control animals that you've trapped. Um, the other necessity that you absolutely have to have by, by law is a trap tag marked with your name and your address. I particularly like to have a pair of what they call gauntlet gloves. These long gloves will keep you dry um, no matter what set you're doing as long as you don't go over shoulder length and they'll also keep you warm particularly in the colder months. These ones have a little bit of a felt lining that do a good job of that. They also do a fine job of protecting your hands from pinches and, and scratches and scrapes along the way. A good pair of waders is also really important. This happens to be a pair of neoprene waders. They do, they do a fine job of keeping you warm in the, in the cooler months. Um, if you do a lot of warm uh, weather beaver trapping, you'd like to have maybe a pair of what they call breathable waders or a PVC. It's a thinner waiter that'll keep you a bit cooler for longer. Waders are also important over hip boots. I get that question. Hip boots, just oftentimes you find yourself over your waist in water to where a hip boot's not going to help you. This is what I use to set my kind of bear traps with. This is my kind of bear setting rope. It's got a loop in one end, a good heavy gauge rope, about a maybe a half inch in diameter, and a good fine braid that helps you to one, keep a good strong rope that's not gonna break on you, and it helps it not to fray and bind as you're uh, setting those kind of bear springs. Moving on, we've got some 11 gauge and some 14 gauge wire. Um, this can be used to wire and traps down in place, um, wire into your stakes, um, helps to set your snares, helps to set your anchors on your drown sets and things like that too. Wire is really, really uh, uh, one of those necessities that you've got to have when trapping, really any animal for that matter. And whenever you're working with wire, it's hard to beat a lineman plier. It's a good heavy stout plier that also has strong cutters that can handle that, that thicker 11 gauge wire. I've also really liked to have extras with me at all times, not just in the trapping shed, but the crunch proof swivels. These are great for when you're doing snares. They help that animal from not getting caught up. It leaves for a, a pain-free catch of that animal um, and also helps to maintain that animal to where he's still there when you come back to, uh, to check the line. These also, these, these uh, 3 16th inch uh, quick links are great for connecting some of your traps to your snares, or I mean not, not to your snares so much, but to your drown slides and to, and to your stakes and things like that and also to your wire. Um, I've also got a uh, little hand saw. This is handy for when you've got to cut some of your own fencing or some of your own staking material. Um, it's hard to beat hard to beat having a little handsaw with you. It also does a good job of when you're trying to get into some of those tough brushy places. A good stout uh, pocket knife is, is nice to have too for when you've got to maybe strip some of your own limbs for some of that eye appeal on the shore or also to show that beaver that there's some activity help you help them come to your trap side a bit better. That's primarily what I use a good heavy heavy knife for. As far as stakes are concerned, whenever we're working around water and water sets, a long 30-inch T-handle stake is a necessity. These long stakes help to actually stake your uh, trap within the uh, trap side effectively. If we go on to some of these shorter uh, land-style stakes, um, a lot of times that beaver is going to be able to pull it out of those soft muds. Um, however, the land stakes are nice for when you do have a good hard pond bottom, a good hard creek bottom, you will find use of the hand stakes. Um, but if you're dealing with soft sediment, you've got to be sure and have that longer 30 inch T stake. To set the stakes, I like this all around um, sledge here. It's just heavy enough to pound stakes in most situations. You can carve out slide areas and, uh, and manipulate the land around your sets that way. It makes for a good stake bed digger and things like that. You can find a lot of uses for it. And for the coyote trappers out there too, this, uh, this shovel here does a good job for some of the dirt hole sets. And you don't have to necessarily carry this with you, but this is some of the fencing and staking that I would otherwise have to cut in some areas where there aren't, aren't good uh, stripped limbs from beavers already there. Um, if you find some good ones, you might want to carry them with you, but usually you can find uh, natural staking like this on site with some natural fencing. Um, lastly, we've got some beaver lures, beaver scents. These are good for some of those caster mound sets, some curiosity scents. 
um, they can help to bring that beaver in, into your trap site. And then finally, and I guess foremost, is a bucket to carry all this in. Don't forget that. This is a lot of equipment. It can easily get lost. Uh, a nice, easy pail like this is, is cheap and effective for moving all this stuff around. They make nice little uh, pack baskets and packs that also go on the outside of these buckets. Those are all pretty handy. But that's pretty much your general rundown of what you've got to have to be an effective beaver trapper here in the state of Alabama.